Hey everyone, uh, build it here. Uh, I'm going to talk about the Raspberry Pi, which is this board right here, a little bit. Not a whole lot, but a little bit, just so you understand some of the things uh, about it. And also then about Arduino. This is not the same board as using the SaramBot, in case people are watching their SaramBot viewers, uh, but it's very similar. It uses the same type of processor. So we can talk about it and, and kind of go over uh, the different things here. So the reason I want to talk about the Pi is a couple of you have asked me about buying a Pi and how to set it up and how to do everything. Well, the, the so they really want to use the Pi to do what's called um, uh, sorry Octoprint. So Octoprint is a software that runs on the Raspberry Pi that allows you to control your printers, uh, so you can transfer files through it. So it you know, if you have the plugin in it, which has the, uh, which mine does, a little plugin card right here. There's a Wi-Fi on here, and so with the Wi-Fi, you can connect wirelessly to your computer and then send your files over wirelessly to your, to the or to the Raspberry Pi board, and then those files will get put then to run on your printer and you can run directly that way or you can put it on the SD card plug it into your printer and then you can tell your your uh, Raspberry Pi or Octoprint when you want to print so you can be at work and you can tell it to print or you can tell it to stop printing that's the other thing I, I sometimes you have a print fail as an example uh, let's see I right here so this, this was a print that I was printing that failed Obviously, right? It's pretty obvious it failed. Well, with Raspberry, with the Octoprint, you can t you can view it. I had a camera set up, so you can view it, and you can see that it failed. And then you can sit there and say stop, and you can stop the print and not continue to waste filament that's just going nowhere. So what happened in this case was the front legs here of this, which is the giraffe that I was printing, uh, a Bernoulli giraffe, giraffe. So that's why it's got all these like holes through it. So it just makes like a statue with, with a, like a honeycomb type pattern in it. So this this broke off the build plate and then it just started spewing stuff everywhere. So you can stop those prints when they're hap when they happen. The other thing you can do is you can run a load a software package. What was my waste bin? Uh, you can load a software package or a plug-in into Octoprint that will allow you to do time-lapse. <coughs> so if you slice, uh, I believe you can run uh, Cura on, I don't know if you can run it on this version, but within Cura you can tell it to slice and it, it knows about Raspberry Pi and it puts the handles in there. What that allows you to do then is you can set the handle and say, I want to move my <clears throat> my nozzle back to the back corner of the print bed then I'm going to take a picture and I'll move back and, and continue printing. <coughs> That's how you get those really pretty uh, time lapses that you see all the time. So uh, anyway the reason I'm, I really want to talk about this, well I got in a, in a bit of a tiff with one of the guys on Twitter because he bought a Raspberry Pi and then it, it wouldn't work with his wall charger. Well, the reason it wouldn't work with a wall charger is because it takes more power, more current than a wall charger does. Just because it has a micro USB connector on it <clears throat> doesn't mean it doesn't take a lot of power. Now I went through and I found all the specs. This is what I do for a living. I'm an engineer, electrical engineer. So I go through specs and I figure out, you know, what it takes. So um, if you actually go and do all the reading, you'll find that the, that the Raspberry Pi this is a 3B, not a 4, so I, I don't have a 4 yet, but that's in my future. Uh, anyway, so the, the 3B takes about 2.5 amps of current to utilize it. So where does all the current go? Really, if you fully load everything on the board so and hook it up to the HDMI so you can hook it up to your computer, you can hook a computer and keyboard up to this and, and run it just like a computer. In fact, they even have a, a Linux operating system so you can run right on this thing and run it on your computer. Um, <clears throat> so, 
anyway, so what I was trying to do is I want the so what happened was I read all the specs. I know that it takes two and a half. Where do the current go? The current goes that if you run everything in the board with no USB things plugged in, it'll take about 1.1 amp of current to run this board when everything's running. Now, when you plug something into it, you're adding, you know, around 250 milliamps for each device you plug in. These are low power USB, not high power USB. So if it's high power, it could be an amp each. So this would, that means this could take four amps if, it, if these were high power. Uh, so that's the specs, okay? Well, what this guy did was he didn't read the specs. And so he got, he said that if, you know, if Arduino is going to use something that doesn't meet, you know, the standard norms for this, uh, then it, they should supply the, co the power cord. Well, that's crap, just because it has a micro USB. I actually went and looked up micro USB on the uh, site, and if you're delivering power, providing power, so power delivery is what they call it, which is what you're doing, you're delivering power to the board through the connector, it's rated up to two and a half amps. Well, right there, you, you, you just saw, you saw, oh, I'm sorry, it's rated up to three amps, sorry. It's rated up to three amps. So right there is, is an issue right there, right? So your typical wall charger that you plug in your phone with, and if you have the micro USB connector like this one right here, I don't know if you can see it very well or not. Uh, let me move it into this camera so you can see it a little better. This is a micro USB connector. Uh, it plugs in. This is actually the charger for this, by the way. So it plugs into this port right here. And that's it. You know, that's how it supplies power to the uh, to the board. So, uh, and this is actually my Raspberry Pi for OctoPrint. It's already set up for OctoPrint on this one. So, his argument was, oh, well, you know, it's got a micro USB. I have lots of those around with, with the wall chargers, and it should just work. Well, that's not the way it happens. You know, you got to go by the current. You're, to charge your phone, you're not continuously on it. You aren't going to use a whole lot of current. So because he made an assumption, I don't know if, er, that's why I have a piece of paper here. Assume. You know, assume. I don't know if everybody's seen this before. So we have assume. But what does assume do? It makes an ass out of you and me. So that's what ended up happening. We got in a big argument over it. I seem like an ass because I'm, be, I'm Mr. Specifications and I go through all the specs. He seemed like an ass because he couldn't bother to read the specs. And he just assumed it would work. So that's why I had a piece of paper there, just to do that. So, by, God, by, by all means, please, you know, if you're going to buy something, understand what you're buying and understand how to make it work is what I'm trying to get at. Now, you make... Most people don't read specs, and that's that's where the problem comes in. Uh, I do read the specs, so I know what this says. If you actually go on Amazon's website and you read about the Raspberry Pi 3, it'll actually tell you right in there that this requires 2.5 amps to run. It's right in Amazon's website. Okay, so that's enough about Raspberry Pi. Um, so if you want to download OctoPrint software, you can go to the OctoPrint website. You can download it. They actually have it set up so you can just program it right into, uh, you know, a micro SD card, like this one right here. So you put it in your micro SD card, it's a 32 gig SD card. You load it right onto that, you plug it in, it's all set up. It's already image, already set to run, and you just plug it in and it's ready to go. That's all you got to do for Octoprint. <coughs> really simple. So uh, I'm done talking about that. So let's talk about Arduino a little bit. So the reason I decided to talk about this was people were asking questions about uh, upgrading to Marlin 2.0. So this is actually a board for one of my other printers and uh, I bought it because I was having trouble downloading the firmware and I didn't know that you had to get the special driver in order to talk to it, which I have now because it was the same driver that was required to run the board that's inside the ceram bot. So I bought this as a replacement and didn't need it. But so now I got it to spare. So once one fails, I have an extra. But it's the same processor. This this right here is your processor that's in your 
in the in the same control board that's in the uh, surround bot printer. So these are 8-bit processors. I believe this is made by AVR, I can't remember. But anyway, uh, so this is your, your what they call Arduino processor. Um, now, if, so the reason that, that Marlin 2.0 was created was that um, the 32-bit processor boards have come out. Well, bye. My wife just leaving. She's going to the bank. Uh, so, with a 32-bit processor, which I believe Duet is one of them. Let me see if I can look up there. I don't have a Duet board, so I can't really uh, show you too much with that. So, I, I'll see if I can find the Duet board. Over here, and let's see. I think it's this camera here. We'll turn that off. Okay, so this is a duet board. This processor right here is a 32-bit processor, and it's not Arduino. So that's where the confusion comes in. People are thinking, "Oh, I got to upgrade to Marlin 2.0," but you don't. You really don't. Now, maybe at some point in the future, you may need to because they'll stop supporting. Uh, the Arduino software, which is what's used to program the 8-bit processors. As more and more printers start migrating toward the 32-bit world, um, you'll, you'll start seeing this disappear. You'll start seeing these boards disappear. You'll start seeing the Arduino disappear. And then you'll have to switch. But in the meantime, you don't need to switch. If, you're, if your printer is working, if everything is going, working the way you expect it to work, there's really not a very, really good reason to switch over. Um, everything that we need to do is on that 8-bit processor and there's really no reason to switch. Now if you go to the 32-bit, there's I'm not sure what all the advantages are of the 32-bit overall other than speed, it'll be a faster processor, but which means it'll probably have better loop controls for the temperatures and things like that. It's, but unless you're going to switch, unless you're going to upgrade that processor right there, upgrade this board to a Duet or, some, or a similar 32-bit board, there is absolutely no reason to do anything. So right there is the processor. Sorry, I'm, I'm always moving my mouse on the wrong screen. So I got uh, it's a two screen on my computer. So you're seeing my other desktop over here, which I have my web page on right now, and then I have my cameras and stuff on the other screen. So if I sometimes I end up moving my mouse on the wrong screen, I'm I'm circling my mouse around the part, and I'm on the other screen on my my video capture screen. So this part right here is your 32-bit processor. Now I know there's a lot more to this and, and I don't want to go into all the details because I haven't done enough research on it. And like I said, I'm really spec driven so I really don't like to give misinformation so I, I won't talk more about it other than my point here was to make that you don't need to switch to Marlin 2.0 um, which, which for most people is going to be a big pain in the butt because the system that programs the part is totally different, right? It no longer uses the Arduino IDE. It now uses uh, Microsoft Studio or there's another program called Atom, which is what on the website for downloading Marlin, they recommend Atom for doing it. And there is a good video on using Atom and setting this all up on YouTube available. Um, so you really don't need, but anyway, you don't need to go there. This will work perfectly fine. Your current board will work perfectly fine uh, unless there's some strange reason, which I don't know of any, so that's why I'm, I'm, I'm doing this. I actually asked Robert Gusick, who, is, uh, who did all this stuff to make the changes in the Arduino uh, software in the config.h and advanced config.h files to fix some of the stuff that uh, to make the surround bot work better, basically. Um, so he did all this stuff, made all these changes. He also did a version for Marlin 2.0. So 
and you know he he said go to this video so this is what I did that's how I know uh, what I already know about it that you need at they're using Adam basically um, so let's see uh, let's see if he's posted any reply back I, I don't know if there was another valid reason for doing it, it was what I'm trying to get at so far there's no reply back yet so uh, you know, if you're on the Saran bot group, I just post made a post earlier. It says, uh, you know, which talks about this. So, um, and if you look here, there's Robert Gusick right here. Uh, he talks about Marlin 2.0, and he says there's a good video. So if you click this, there's a video right here, which is on YouTube, and he talk about uh, about how to use it, how to set up Atom, how to get it to program, and how to get it to compile and, and upload to your processor. But there's really no reason to do it. So unless you're, unless you're going to upgrade your whole printer control board to a 32-bit processor, you don't need to really upgrade to uh, Marlin 2.0. Stick with your Marlin 1.9 or 1.89 or whatever it's, whatever it is, and just keep using that for now, and you'll be fine. Like I said, Marlin 2.0 is for 32-bit. Uh, if you want to read more about it, this is Matter Hacker's website. Uh, where they have the Duet 3D, Duet 2 Wi-Fi 3D printer controller board. Um, so let's see, I can bring this over a little more. Make these a little bit smaller. So like I said, it's a 32-bit processor. Uh, there's probably a lot more to it than, than that. I don't know all the ins and outs of it. Right there it says uh, Atmel 32-bit. Uh, ARM Cortex M4 network connected Wi-Fi and, eth and Ethernet or Ethernet, not both. Uh, stepper drivers are integrated into it, so you don't need to have the separate little boards that plug in. So, like this is the older board; it has the separate plugins, just like we do on the current board that's used in the Saram bot. Uh, so there's the same ones. This is, this is typical of most of the older boards where you have the separate driver boards that plug in. You had to put all the jumpers in here to activate the the uh, the drivers, and then it goes X Y Z E one E zero and so on, just like it does on the R board. Uh, the board that's in the surround bot also has the same thing. Two connectors here. This is your your display. Um, these are your inputs for your limit switches. You know, so it's all it's pretty standard stuff. Uh, once you get used to what you're looking at. And of course, in your uh, USB port. So, just want to go over that a little bit, just to let you know that this is not something that is new to anybody. Um, you know, the question came. You know, someone is asking me, so I, you know, they actually sent me a message directly through uh, Messenger, which comes from Facebook, asking about upgrading to Marlin 2.0. And I said, if there was a val you know, if there's a valid reason, I would do a whole video on doing it. But otherwise, uh, there's no need, necessarily no need to do so. So that's where we're at with that. That pretty much covers everything you need to know right now. If you'd like to see a full version about Raspberry Pi and Octoprint, I can do a video on it. Just let me know. I know there's lots of videos out there though on YouTube already. But you know, some people don't like other people's style. Maybe you like my style, maybe you don't. Um, I can do this. I can go through and I can I can go through how to get the software, how to load it onto an SD card, how to plug it into the Raspberry Pi. I might do that when I buy a, a Pi 4. I've been thinking about upgrading the Pi 4. I think this is just... Now, this is only my opinion. Other people said they've had great luck running this, but I've had some problems with it. Uh, it seems to me like the processor is a little underpowered on this board. So that's why I would like to go to a 4, because a 4 is a, is a uh, more powerful processor. So the processor on this one is, is I believe, right here underneath this heat sink. So obviously the, the processor gets a little on the warm side, which is why you put a heat sink on it. And, you know, so, yeah, this has a mount on it because I actually have a case that this slides into and plugs in to cover all this because I don't use, 
uh, either this is the external connector for hooking up other external devices. Uh, this right here is the connector where you plug in a camera. I think that's the camera. Yeah. So right there, you plug in your camera here, and you can hook up your display if you're hooking up a, a, a monitor or a, a you know, LCD display you can hook up on here. Um, if you're going to use a regular uh, TV and keyboard, I believe the keyboard splits off of the HDMI, so you have to have a special cable for splitting off the keyboard and the and that. Or maybe maybe the keyboard works over USB. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure. I haven't actually done that. Um, what I found was easier in this case. I bought this board already programmed with OctoPrint in it, and so it was already ready to go. So that's that was my way of doing it. Uh, sure, I could sit there and do it. But, you know, how much time do I have? And that's, that's the things you got to look at, too. How much time do you have to do everything? You know, it, it's an important thing to think about. Do I have the time to go and learn how to do this, right? Because that's one of the things. You know, I don't instantly have the knowledge to do this, right? I don't instantly have the knowledge on how to set up and program OctoPrint on a Raspberry Pi. I have to go do the research on it. You know, that's what, that's what the people who do videos, that's what they're doing. They're going and doing the research. And then they're presented it to you on, on a video on how to do it once they've gone and done the research. Same with this board, you know, same with programming Arduino. My first time programming Arduino, man, I had all kinds of problems. I, I, you wouldn't believe all the problems I had. But I did the research, I found out how to do it, I got it to work, and then I, and then I did a video showing how to do it during the assembly of the Saram bus. So, I mean, it's really just do, sitting down doing the research, reading the specs, you know, read the specs know what it takes don't try and use a wall charger this is this is the valid way to do it right here this has an on off switch built into it so you can turn on and off your raspberry pi this is the correct charge uh, correct power supply so this one is a uh, let's see oh, output is five volts at three amps so this will give you plenty of power uh, typically, you aren't going to find. You may not find a two and a half amp version, but I, I always like to go a little bit over in case something else is drawing more power than you expect. And three amps is perfect for me, considering that it's supposed to be two and a half. So three amps works great. Uh, this has standard, you know, uh, uh, internet, Ethernet, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that will work. It's also Wi-Fi. I, I use the Wi-Fi. And most people will probably will use the Wi-Fi. Uh, there's actually an app for OctoPrint that goes on your phone. Uh, see if I can find it here. I haven't used it in a while. Right here, OctoClient. And right now it's not going to find anything because there's nothing connected. But it will show you your nozzle temperatures. It shows you, you know, how much of your print is complete. Uh, up here where the screen is currently blank is where the video would be showing your, your picture of your printer running, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's all on here on the, on the client uh, once you've set it up. So that's pretty much that. Um, you have to go in and set up your settings though on OctoPrint. It's not just OctoClient. you got to go in and go into settings. And then I had set for my Ender 3, which is what I was running. Um, and let's see. Da, 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 find where it is here. I think I just click on Ender 3 Pro. No, nope, not there. Printer's right here. Better printers. I have Ender 3 Pro. And then it has what my website address is. Uh, I can edit it. So right now it's set to, you know, HTTP divine, da 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 da. So it, I had to do that to go and get a, uh, a domain, basically, for this to allow me to do this. And you have to do the same thing. I, you know, if you want to know how to set up this and get it all set up, I can do a video on that as well. Um, so, if you have any questions or you want anything, you know, leave a comment. Tell us, yeah, I want to know more about that, how to set up OctoPrint, how to get an OctoClient to work on my phone. Uh, if you really want to know how to set up Marlin 2.0 and you want me to do a video on it, let me know. I will do it. Uh, I should do it anyway just because I need to, I should learn how to do it for uh, the future. And I think, like I said, I think the future is going to be that most of your newer printers are going to be 
uh, going to the 32 bit processors. I'm not sure if the Duet has the what they call tri minute drivers, you know, which is they're really quiet. I don't know if that has that on here or not. Uh, it just says TMC 25 2660. So I don't know if there's the quiet drivers or not, but you know, there's some. So if you notice, you get a lot of noise from your printer motors and stuff like that. They have things called TL smoothers, which will smooth out the signal that's going to the motors, so that it will quiet it down. Well, in the some of the newer drivers, they've got that in it built into the driver, so you don't have to add anything external to do that. So that's one way of quieting your your printers down. So, all right, so that's it. Uh, that's just like a little bit. I just want to talk a little bit about it so you guys get an idea of what you're looking for. Uh, if you want more information on Raspberry Pi, I can certainly give you more information. I can, you know, go and pull up data sheets and show you all this stuff and all the information. Like I said, I went through this with this guy on all this stuff. You know, I, I, in fact, I probably have the screen captures that I did when I gathered all the information and presented it uh, to this guy. So right here is about the different types of uh, of uh, USB. So uh, on here there's a, where is it? Right here. Power delivery 1.0 micro USB 3 amps. So this is supposed to be a power delivery. It's 3 amps. See, there was another. Oops, all right, sorry. There's another one here. Uh, you know, 459 milliamp. Uh, 1.13 maximum load. This is for the the This is the ratings of the actual Raspberry Pi. We have a monitor, keyboard, mouse, and Wi-Fi connected. So, uh, I thought there was one more. Oh, right here. This is right off of Amazon's website. Pi 3 to Pi 2 compared. And this is right here. Two and a half ounce power supply. So that's the other thing. Those are all the different things that you need to know as far as these are all the specs. You know, I presented it to the guy and he still argued with me. Or you were just, he said I was cherry picking my specs. No, I'm not cherry picking my specs. I'm trying to explain to you why you need to do the research so that you can get the right power adapter to run your Raspberry Pi. So I hope that all helps you all. I hope that helped a good way to explain it. Uh, I bought this one from a company called TH3D, so it's all pre-programmed, pre-set up. The only thing I had to do is set up OctoClient on my phone, and uh, that was pretty much it. I did have a camera mount mounted on my Ender 3. But it was actually giving me some problems. It was run. It was actually having the print bed was running in into stuff with it. Uh, so this had a little articulating arm that attached to it, and then the camera could sit up and it would look at the printer bed and it moved with the printer bed. But this was running into things, and that was giving me a problem. So that's that's something to be aware of uh, on the types of different types of things that you can do. But if you set up the Octolapse and it goes back and sits at one point, you don't need to have the camera mount it to your printer bed. You can have it sitting wherever you want. Because it's going to always go back and stop at this point, so the print's not going to be moving. So, you know, if you're taking pictures while it's in motion, it'll seem like, and, and you're riding, on, riding with the print bed, then it would seem like it's uh, always in the same place all the time. You know, it's always following it. It always keeps it in focus. But you don't care. You only need to be in focus for that one moment while you're taking the picture. <coughs> So that's how you get your time lapses, and that's how that works. Um, I have any questions? Uh, feel free to contact me. You know, just leave a comment on the video, and I will get back to you on that. That is all I really want to talk about. I just want, kind of want to tell you why you don't need Marlin, and read the specs, guys. Read the specs, please. Don't assume anything, especially in the world of electronics. Don't assume anything. Like I said, I'm an engineer. I, I'm all about specs, so I'm always reading specs 
That's what I do all day. I read specs for different parts that I'm working with when I'm making an, when I'm designing something new. So, and that's what I do. I design all day. And I write software. So I do both. I design hardware and I write the, I write firmware. So I write firmware like that would go inside this processor. Not this processor per se, but for ones that I work with. I'm using uh, digital signal processor chips, uh, DS PICs. They're PIC processors. They're made for uh, digital signal processing. And that's what I work with for my embedded programming. Uh, they're made by microchip. So that's what I do, and that's why I read specs all day, and you know, so I know what's going to work with what. Um, so, okay, y'all take care, have a great day. Uh, I can't think of anything else. Every time I think of something, I add, keep adding on. The video keeps going longer and longer. Sorry about that, but that's you know, I don't want to leave things out if I don't need. So, uh, maybe you want to see TH3D's website on this. I don't know. You can you can look it up. TH3D is the name of the company so like i think it's th3d.com that's t as in tom h as in henry 3d like 3d printing uh th3d.com i believe is their website and uh, you can go there you can look up their uh their octo or yeah octo print i think they call it easy print or something like that or easy pie or something they call it but it's octo print it's a they slightly modify octo print but not very much so that's it. Have a great one, guys. Build it out. Uh, I'll talk to you all later. Um, uh, I have another video that I'm going to release, which I, I did a couple of test prints that I'm going to do, show and everything. Um, you know, it has to do with uh, resin printing. So that's another one I'm working on. I made what I call a light bucket. So I will uh, be going showing how I built my light bucket, and, and that's or curing my prints. So have a great one, everybody take care, build it out.